Welcome. In this video, we will look at how limit rules allow us to compute and justify limits of functions that are constructed from more elementary formulas whose limits are known. In our example, we suppose that we know a particular limit. We know that the limit of f of x over x, so that's our function, as x goes to 0, that limit has a value of 4. And we want to find the limit of 4f of x over x times 2 plus x squared as x goes to 0. And we need to justify that using limit rules. The idea behind limit rules is to look at our formula we're working with. So here this function that's inside of the brackets. And we want to see how that formula is constructed out of more elementary parts. And we might do that by thinking about um, a tree, a tree diagram that describes those operations. So for example, um, if I look at this, it's a quotient. I've got 4 f of x on top, and I've got x times 2 plus x squared on the bottom. And I could think of this formula as a quotient. That is, my formula, 4 f of x over x times 2 plus x squared, is a quotient, we're dividing the formula 4f of x by the formula x times 2 plus x squared. And I could then break each of those down and see that 4f of x is a product, so it's a multiplication of a constant 4 with f of x, and the denominator x, plus, x times 2 plus x squared is also a product of x and 2 plus x squared. And I could keep going like that, but uh, we're going to run into a, tr into a problem here in just a moment. I need to be able to find limits of these individual pieces. So 4, I know how to do. It turns out f of x I don't have because I've got um, a limit of f of x over x. So for this particular problem, what I need to do is I need to go back to the original formula and think about how maybe f of x over x fits into that formula. So let's go back and see what happens. Instead of thinking of this function as a quotient, I'm going to rewrite it and think of I've got f of x over x as part of my formula. I factor it out. And now I think of this entire thing as a product. I've got f of x over x times the, the quotient of 4 over 2 plus x squared. So now I can start to break this down into its parts. I've got a product. It's 4, sorry. It's f of x over x is a formula, and 4 over 2 plus x squared is a formula. And I am, I know right now what the limit of f of x over x is, so this step is going to be built in. On the other hand, my other formula, I need to think of that um, as a quotient. So again, we think of this as two formulas. I've got 4 on the top and 2 plus x squared on the bottom. And I think, all right, 4, that's a constant. I know how to calculate a limit. Uh, but 2 plus x squared, that's still a formula that's built from more basic parts. It's a sum of 2 and x squared. And then x squared is a product of x with itself. And so we're going to build up each of these pieces um, using limit rules to find the final limit. Because limit rules use limits of um, elementary functions to calculate limits of more complex constructed functions, we always need to start by writing down the limits of our elementary pieces. And so we had a few of those. Uh, let's just point out what they are. Remember we had f of x over x, we're going to include that. Uh, we had two constants. Remember, we had the constant 4 and the constant 2. And then we had this function x squared, which was a product of x with itself. And so x is my elementary piece. So these are our four elementary starting points. Uh, what do we know? We know that the limit of f of x over x, as x goes to 0, is 4 because that was something that was given to us. We have the limit of constants. Well, constants aren't changing, so it doesn't matter what x is. 
the limit of x, sorry, of 4 as x goes to 0 is 4, and the limit of 2 as x goes to 0 is 2, and these are both constant functions. And that's an elementary function. We know the limits of. Finally, we have the limit of x itself. If x is going to 0, the limit of x is naturally 0. And this is the limit of the identity. Those are my elementary uh, limits. And what we'll do now is we're going to use the limit rules to uh, construct more complicated formulas. In our denominator, we had 2 plus x squared, so we need to build up, and before we can do the sum, we need to do that x squared. So x squared, we need its limit as x goes to 0. And a squaring just means we're multiplying x times itself. So let's write that. Our limit that we really are doing is x times x as x goes to 0. And uh, the way that the limit rules work is uh, I've got x is something I've calculated earlier in my limits. And the product of x times x has a limit that's going to be the product of 0 times 0. And so the limit of x squared is really 0 times 0 or just 0. And this is the limit of a product. Once I have the limit of a product, I can now um, construct 2 plus x squared using the limit of a sum. We know the limit of 2 from our third step, and we know the limit of x squared from our fifth step. And the limit of 2 was 2, and the limit of x squared was 0, and so this limit is 2. That's the limit of a sum. And that's our denominator. We can now construct the limit of our quotient. We knew the limit of 4 and of 2 plus x squared. And so the limit of a quotient will allow me to say that the limit of 4 over 2 plus x squared is the limit of 4 over the limit of 2 plus x squared, which was 2. And so we get a value of 2. And that's because of the limit of quotient. And now we're almost done. The last step is to multiply our two results. The limit of interest for f of x over x times 2 plus x squared, um, we rewrite that. We think of that as the limit of f of x over x times 4 over 2 plus x squared. We do, we already know both of those limits. f of x over x has a limit of 4 and 4 over 2 plus x squared has a limit of 2. That is the product rule again. And our final value is 8. To recap, what did we do? We looked at the formula we wanted to find a limit of, and we thought about how is it constructed from elementary pieces. Using those elementary pieces, we started with limits that we knew. Either they were given to us, it was the limit of a constant, or the limit of the identity function. And then we went step by step, building up to the final formula. We found x squared, so that we could find 2 plus x squared, so that we could find 4 over 2 plus x squared. And as we progressively got more complicated constructions, we eventually reached a point where we had um, f of x over x, which we knew, and a quotient which we knew so that we could find our final limit um, as we needed. Because each of these steps is justified by a limit rule, we know this is true. It's a proof. And that's how you do limits using rules.